up, divas? What's up, divos? So you guys already know it's Real Talk Wednesday and it's your girl, April. So I hope you all having like a really great week. It is time to do this Real Talk, you guys. Let me tell y'all a funny story, but not really funny. Like, I mean, it can be funny. Um, so I bought some batteries for my scale because I didn't have any batteries for my scale for like two weeks, you know? So the last time I weighed myself, I was XYZ amount, okay? So the scale stopped working because the batteries were dead, and I finally got some a, a battery last night, 9-volt battery. So I never have those. I have every battery except for a 9-volt. Let me tell y'all, I really wish I wouldn't even put the damn battery in there because I'm trying to figure out for the life of me how the fuck did I gain seven pounds when i've been going on walks every day working out not vigorously but you know i've been putting in a little 10 minutes here and there and um yeah i i i wasn't watching what i was eating but i figured like you know hey i mean i was somewhat watching but not watching like i wasn't i wasn't stalking myself i was just peeking okay so i'm like okay so i get up every morning i go for walks some days i walk twice which is once a week, like on Friday. Um, and I'm just like, what the hell? This is when I wish the batteries still didn't work. I mean, it's funny. It's not funny. You know, we, I'm pretty sure we all have our moments, but girl, yes. So in return for that, I said, you know what? Today's Monday. I got up and went and did what I normally do, you know, go for a walk, exercise, drop the kids off to their destination of choice, which is school because they ain't got no choices. And then I drove to Burlington um, because Burlington opens up at 7 a.m. And I like to go to this one particular one in AZ Mills. So my daughter, Nate, goes along with me. And um, this is like 8 o'clock, you know, saying by now it's 8 o'clock. So we go to Burlington and... Um, I like to go there for um for sneakers because they got like some really cool sneakers at this one. And look, if I could pay twenty dollars or twenty five dollars for some really good sneakers, then girl, like when I say good sneakers, like there's New Balances. I got New Balances. I got like two pair of Nikes that was twenty five dollars. Reeboks, Feelies. So I got a nice, quite a nice collection of sneakers over the past few weeks for, from Burlington. So we go there, and I don't know if y'all remember this, but um. This sneaker brand. When I seen this pair of sneakers, now mind you, I wear a size 11. So when I see, I, I normally stay in the men's section when it comes to the sneakers at any any store. So I seen these sneakers. I'm going to pop a picture in. And I was like, OMG, they wasn't in the men's section though. Okay, they was in the women's section because that's where my daughter Nay was at. And they was on. there was only one pair because I go down every single aisle in the sneaker aisle. Only because, you know, people will throw sneakers if it ain't the size. So they don't really be, like, always organized like that. Girl, why did I see some L.A. Gears? Now, if y'all was born when I was born, y'all remember them L.A. Gears? Girl, and they was $10. They had a red tag on a size 9, her size, my daughter's size. Why did I try to slip my foot in them? Like, it ain't even slipping. It's trying to shove my foot in them. Because, you know, sometimes I could wear like a 10 in women's sneakers. I said a 10, not a 9. But, I, you know, you just want to try it. it. Look, they were the same goddamn sneakers that I had in the 80s. And they brought back so many memories. And it was $10. Please tell me why I went down every aisle three times after that. Because I was trying to make sure that I didn't miss a pair in a size 10 or maybe even a size 11. That was like the bomber sneaker ever in the 80s if you guys know what i'm talking about then you know put a la gear like you know put la gear in the comments down below but you know sometimes you wish you could really rewind time so we went to burlington only just to kill time because the weight doctor doesn't open up until nine o'clock well since burlington is open from 7 a.m to midnight which is a damn shame because don't you think people want to go home like who the hell needs to be shopping for home decor at seven o'clock in the morning or at midnight. Either way, you know, that's not my business. But I just wanted to kill some time because I really didn't want to come back in the house and then leave back out. There's something about when you come in the house. For me, I just don't want to go back outside. And when we got to the weight doctor, you know, I went back to the weight doctor because that's how I started losing weight a couple of years ago. You got to work out too, and that's what I did. So I figured maybe I can just get a little boost in the health. Well, she took my blood pressure, and then she had to take it twice. So she said my blood pressure was so high that I wasn't going to be able to do the weight loss program today. I can come back tomorrow and see if my blood pressure was high again. 
I've never had an issue with my blood pressure unless I'm upset about something. I just, want, I just need a little bit of help in um, boosting my weight loss. I just want to be a little bit more healthier, you, you understand? Because then I can get around easier. It's just a lot easier for me if I'm a little bit smaller. I just want to get back to like a certain weight that I was. Never said I wanted to be a supermodel. Never said I wanted to wear a size 10. I just want to be comfortable in the clothes that I already have. So that way I don't have to go buy no new ones, basically. Let me just say this to y'all. Y'all can take it how y'all want. But chill with the toxic shit. Like on some real shit, chill with the toxic shit. I'm trying to be a better person. So with me, like, yeah, we all love drama. Who don't love drama, okay? Drama attracts. Drama gets views. Drama. But there comes a time when you got to just chill and leave that bullshit drama, toxic shit alone. You know what I'm saying? There comes a time after a while when that shit starts to get real old. And then it's just like, girl, move on. Move the fuck on. Like, let's chill with the toxic shit. Because I do think, like, we got enough toxic shit going on in the world where you don't need to come to anybody's video and leave a dumbass comment. Like, oh, I thought you were cool. That's the problem with a lot of people on YouTube. They think that because you watch somebody, they feel like they know you personally. They feel like, oh, because she seems so cool, she's like a bestie to me. You don't even know me personally to say if you even want to be my goddamn friend, let alone my neighbor. Some people get too wrapped up, basically, in other people's lives on YouTube or other people on YouTube in general. When you write dumb shit on my videos, sometimes I just block you or just delete you. Sometimes I do feel the need that I have to respond because maybe you learn a lesson. Not that I'm trying to be a teacher or anything, but maybe you learn something from what I'm about to say to you. And I don't have to call you no bitch, no dumbass, no none of that shit. I don't have to call you no names or anything. But what I can do is teach you a lesson and maybe you learn that being toxic is not so goddamn cool. And then you take that un that toxic shit elsewhere because over here it really don't, you know, it don't get no play. So it's 2021, you guys. Let's chill with the toxic shit because I think like there's so much toxic shit going on in the world that we don't even need that shit. We got toxic fucking viruses going around. There are, there are... Things that, you know, I just try to stay out of. And toxic is definitely one of them. I ain't saying you got to do periwets around people and shit and fly like a fairy. But just try to be a little bit better to yourself. And a better self of you. You know what I mean? We're going to do this promotion real quick. Um, and then we're going to move on to this real talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, so I thought I'd bring you this promo. If you love self-care, you love yourself, you want to take care of your skin and your body, you may want to check out the Careful Heart Company. They have some really nice homemade soaps, which is the Uplift Bar. They also have plenty of potions where you can relax in your bathtub. You know, it's all about self-care. If you love taking a nice warm bath, you may want to try out the Harmonious Herbal and Floral Mixed Foaming Bath Soap. This is great. I did try this in my foot um, tub which made a big difference I do like to soak my feet so they can get a little soft they also have other soaps this is the milk honey and oatmeal which I did try and this one here is the self love this is a limited edition I have yet to try this one out but so far I'm really loving the milk and honey and one of my favorite scents is the peppermint I have yet to use this but I love a peppermint scent in general now, if you have dry skin, this may work for you. I did try this out on my dry skin. And this is to relax, relate, and release the exfoliating body polish. And this is all natural products. It's made with all natural products like rose and florals and things like that. So this one here is a nice oily substance. And it did work well on the bottom of my feet. So you guys... Check them out. I'll post their information down below. You know, it's all about self-care. You got to make sure to love yourself because if you don't love you, who else is going to? Let's get into this video. So now we're going to get into this real talk. If you got a real talk and you want me to talk about it, you can send me an email to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. And please make sure to change your name in the email. If your name is Kelsey, but you don't want it to be for this particular email, you can definitely say April. You can change it or I've changed my name. Either way, I'm probably going to say it. But just go ahead and send me a 
Real Talk email and put in the subject line Real Talk. Are you guys? So, real talk. I need your help. Hi, April. How are you? First off, I want to say I love your channel. I've been a fan of yours for about two years now. I extremely appreciate your honesty and how well connected you are with your subscribers. You mean so much to us. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Blank, and I'm 26 years old. I live a pretty decent life. There's a man in my life. We can call him Daniel. Okay, so we're going to call her... All right, okay, so she did rename herself. I had to look at her email first. All right, her email name. So, let's see, okay. You can call me Daisy. My name is Daisy, and I'm 26 years old. I live a pretty decent life. There's a man in my life, we can call him Daniel, who I'm now dating. Me and Daniel have known each other for about 10 years. He always wanted to date me, but I never ever gave him the time of day. So to fast forward, me and him happened to cross each other's paths in December of 2019. When we came about, it was the year, the first year death anniversary of his six year girlfriend. So let me see. When we came about, it was the first year and death anniversary of his girlfriend of six years, what she meant. His ex was killed by a guy she was cheating on him with. So Daniel's ex-girlfriend was killed by another guy whom his girlfriend was cheating on him with. Till this day, he's still really upset about losing her, which I completely understand. The issue that I'm facing is that if there's a song or a movie that comes on that reminds him of her, he makes me turn it off. I try to tell him that it's okay to embrace this person instead of trying to pretend it didn't happen but it's becoming a bit overwhelming for me. He has these crazy mood swings. If we have a disagreement in public, he would show his ass. He gets so mad so quick. I've had it. Every time I try to tell him a fact about myself, he responds with a fact about her. A comparison, if you would. Now on the other side, he isn't a horrible guy. He is financially stable. He buys me whatever I want. He spends a lot of time with me and my family as well. I guess that's why I'm not really ready to, to walk away from him. April, I do want to apologize to you if this story is a bit much. I do give you my deepest condolences to you and your family. I had just felt you are the only person I trust who could help me in my time of need. What do you suggest I do? Should I walk away or should I stay? I don't know if it's that I'm selfish or not. I just know that this hurts me. He says things like this. He says things like his happiness is gone and that he doesn't want to get close to anyone else. But when I suggest that we break up, he gets extremely upset. He hates the fact of us not dealing with each other. It's come to a point where I feel that he's only with me because I've been his outlet. I don't mind him talking about his feelings to me about her. It's just, when does it stop? I really need your help because I feel so confused. Okay. Well... So we got Daisy, who's dating a guy, and they've known each other for, what does it say here? They've known each other for 10 years, and he's always wanted to date her. So Daniel's always Daniel has always wanted to date Daisy, okay? They've known each other for about 10 years. They crossed each other's paths in December of 2019. And in December of 2019, it was the year anniversary death of Daniel's girlfriend of six years whom was killed by another man she was cheating on Daniel with. So now here is the issue. Daniel is having a hard time dealing with the fact that his ex of six years is gone, but he's comparing the two. He's comparing Daisy. He's having these outbursts. When he gets upset, he's showing his ass in public, not literally showing his butt cheeks, but, you know, showing off tantrums, you know, causing a scene, allowing everybody to, you know, embarrassment. He's doing shit like that. And Daisy's, she's tired of it. She's had, she's had it. But, um, she's had it with him just showing his ass. But on the other part, 
he's a really good guy, so she says, because he'll buy her whatever she wants. You know, he spends time with her and the family. Um, yada, yada, yada. And then it's the part where he's having these crazy mood swings, and he's also telling her he doesn't want to get close to anyone, you know. But then when she suggests maybe they should go their separate ways, he's getting, you know, he's getting upset about that because he doesn't want to be without her. And she don't really know what to do. Girl, let me tell y'all. This is, you know, I don't really know if a lot of you guys know um, what happened in my life recently in August of 2019. But um, my son, my middle son, he was 21. He passed away. And, you know, I understand how she feels. And then I can understand also how Daniel feels. You know, when my son passed away, there were a lot of things that I just like shut out of my life. You know what I'm saying? It was, y'all know I don't really have a lot of friends. So the little bit of friends and people that I did know, I just didn't want to talk to anyone, okay? I slept in my son's room for like about three, three, four months. Okay, um, it was like, it might have been like three months, close to three months. And um, I didn't go outside a lot. I didn't, I didn't go outside a lot because I just felt like if he can't see outside and he can't enjoy outside anymore, then I don't want to either. There were a lot of things that I was going through for a very long time, okay? And still to this day, there are a lot of things that bother me. There are a lot of things that hurt. You know, I miss, I miss my son a lot. I really do. And, um, you know, I had a lot of like hurt sometimes I feel guilty you know I just feel so many different things and with me and that guy that used to live here with me because that's what I call him now when we would get into discussions you know there were a lot of times when I would lash out at him you know I, and I did because it just was like a lot of built up anger and a lot of built up hurt. And I just found myself constantly like bickering, bickering with him, you know? And then also the way I started feeling like about him, like he was trying to manipulate me. Like I would say that to him because I know what manipulation is. So, you know, I started lashing out at him too a lot. And there were a lot of things that I felt within myself that I just really didn't want to be on this earth anymore a lot. You know, I, I just rather have been with my son. But I know that I have grandkids and I have four other children that need me just as well. And I know that my son would have never approved of me feeling that way. So, you know, like like I was saying, Daniel, he going through a lot, Daisy. Like seriously, a lot. But he 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 has to learn a different way of grieving and you know, like nobody is taught how to grieve you know we all do it differently we do and um there would be certain songs that i would hear of my son that he would love okay and it was crazy because it wasn't even like rap songs it was just like certain songs and i would break down like seriously i would break down in tears like because it would seem like the song would just come on out of nowhere and um so i would just break down and i had to stop listening to them for a while and um i had to stop listening to them and i had to sometimes i would just like not even stop listening, but just block a lot of things. You know, I would just kind of like mask the, um, Whew. hold on guys. Ooh, I have to, I had to pull it together real quick. I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold it together right now. Okay, so like I was saying, there was there was there was just some songs that I just would have to just cut off automatically, like really quick, because I knew it just brought me it just brought me to a place where I just couldn't I just couldn't go. Um, and I used YouTube as a mask, you know. I did leave YouTube for a couple of months, you know. I left for a few months, and I just would mope around the house. I would just 
eat and eat. And that's how I gained a lot of my weight back because when I, when all this occurred, I was 192 pounds, you know, like 196 pounds. And, um, by the time everything, you know, by the time my son was cremated, I was a hundred and like 82, 82 pounds. So I had lost a lot of weight. Um, and then I had gained it back, um, because I was just like depressed and I started, you know, using, I, I came back to YouTube because I needed something to occupy my time. My mind was all over the place and it wasn't in a place that was good. Okay. And I know some people would be like, no, that's a good thing that you're thinking about your son all the time. Don't feel like that. It, it was a good thing. But then the things that I would think of, like, you know, I got to a part in my, in, in my grieving process where I would meditate all the time because I would try to talk to him. I started looking up medium so that I could contact him. I started reading all kind of things of just how to contact my son. It, it, and it got to a point where it was like April, it wasn't healthy. And my mind was just consumed in this one place. How I miss my son. I can't wait to see him. How can I talk to him to, again? This is my fault. It was just like all kind of things. And I had nothing but time on my hand to think about this stuff. So I came back to YouTube to mask my feelings and not even mask them, but kind of like block certain shit out. So that way I wouldn't feel so down. You know, I, I even was going to a therapist. You know, I, I went and seen a therapist for some time. Um, it didn't help. It didn't help any. My mom and suggested oh maybe you should take medication i didn't i didn't want that because i don't want something to just numb me inside i i needed to feel the pain sometimes it was just so much that i just needed something to help me you know get through the grieving process but also keep my mind busy with other things and not just sitting around and keeping myself just like you know stuck in one place so i used youtube as a mask to cover like the depression and the, the the hurt that I felt. And I knew that it would help me just think of other things because it would keep me busy. And it did that. It did that. But it wasn't a good thing. It wasn't. It wasn't a good thing for me because inside I still felt the pain. You know, I still felt the pain of my son not being here. And I still do. Um, I'll never forget. I'm a very paranoid person. I get scared a lot. Not of people, but just a certain situation that, you know, I have no control over. And the coronavirus was something I had no control over, you know. And um, when it came out here, I was so scared, you guys. And all I do was sit and watch the news all day long. Not realizing that the news and social media about the COVID was making my anxiety worse. Like I had it really bad and I would be crying, you know, when I would watch the news, I would get so scared. I would, when I would go outside, I'd have on rubber dish gloves, okay? On top of, you know, the, um, the regular rubber gloves that you know, because I had those for doing hair. So I'd have on two sets of gloves. I'd have on a mask. Okay, because thank God I had those too on the on deck. I'd have on a mask, and then I'd have on one of those headbands that you couldn't, you know, that's really long, and you could wear them as a mask too. I'd have on that. Then I'd have on some sunglasses, and then I'd have on a hoodie pulled tight. Okay, and my pants tucked into my boots. This was me going to the stores, okay? Talk about being scared. It was hot too and all of that shit, right? But I was so scared. I didn't want to die. I didn't want anybody to die. I didn't want to get sick. I was scared. I was just scared out of my mind, scared. And I never forget one night, I went downstairs 
to make that guy that used to live here, you know what I'm talking about, a sandwich. And I kept hearing the wind chimes in my backyard. They were just making this beautiful sound. And I got these wind chimes from my son's job. They sent them to me and it had his name on them. And I love them. I always wanted some wind chimes and I have been looking for some for quite some time. And every, one that, every wind chime that I found was kind of cheaply priced. You know, I'm cheap, but they didn't have a good sound because they're cheap. They sent me these wind chimes and they came from like this really nice place. Girl, they just sound so beautiful. So like I was saying, I was downstairs making a sandwich for that guy that used to live here. And um, I heard the wind chimes. And it's late. It's probably like 12 o'clock at night. And right in that moment, I just started to cry. And I started to cry. And then I started to talk to my son. And then I started to talk to God. And I realized that my son... He is good. He is somewhere watching over me and his siblings. And even that guy that used to live here, he watching over us to make sure that we stay safe through all of this foolish nonsense that's going on with the COVID, with the rioting, with all of that, you know? And I said, I, and from that moment, I felt like an ease, you know what I'm saying? I didn't feel so tight inside anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like I was able to breathe a little bit and I was able to accept the fact that he's not here right now with me in the physical, but he is still here, you know? So that moment, it allowed me to just fall back a little bit and just, just allow life to take its course. So, Daisy, give me one second, you guys. Daisy, this is to you. Every person grieves differently, and, you know, the process is a tough one. I'm not saying I'm over anything, because I'm definitely not. I have several times a week where I'm, you know, thinking a little bit too much. And sometimes I could just be driving and bust out in tears out of nowhere. But I think, like, with Daniel... You may need to give him his space. Like, this is just my honest opinion because me, I don't I don't want to be in a relationship because of losing my son. It's, it's, it's that, but it's also because I feel like being in a relationship with someone is not going to make me happy. I got to find the happiness inside. I got to allow all of the pain and the hurt turn itself, just kind of like flip itself around. You know what I mean? Like... I just gotta allow the pain and hurt that I'm going through to ride out. I gotta ride that out and I gotta learn how to deal with it. And I think like me, I don't have the strength in me enough to give to another person to be in a relationship. You know, another person can't make me happy. They can't fill the void. They can't make me happy. You know, they can't bring my son back. So even though I was in a relationship with that guy that used to live here, I don't want to be in another relationship anytime soon because I have to heal within myself and trying to take on another person's, you know, personality, another person. That's a lot to deal with, let alone try to deal with losing someone. So I really just feel like Daniel is not ready to be with someone else. And like he said, he doesn't want to get close to anyone. And that right there is like a key factor. If he's telling you that he's not ready to get close to someone or he does not want to get so close to someone, then he's got like a huge guard up. He's got a guard up and he's not ready to be in a relationship. And even though you guys are in a relationship, he may just be using you as a mask to fill the void of loneliness, to fill the void of all of that stuff that's going through his head. And even though he still thinks about it, it comes up with songs, movies, TV shows, whatever, it's still in the back of his head. It's sometimes even in the front of his head. And that's something that he just gotta learn to deal with on his own time. Can't nobody rush you to grieve. Can't nobody rush you to get over someone that you truly love. And it's unfortunate that, you know, 
you met him at a time when you did because I'm pretty sure you really do care for him a lot and I can see that in your writing but this time is not the right time for him it's it's still fresh and new sometimes people think like a year is a long time a year is not a long time you know my son has been gone for almost two years this August and those two years don't feel like two years to me they don't they feel they feel long but two years is not a long time for anybody to get over a huge part of their life you'll never get over that you know you just learn to deal with it and with Daniel he really hasn't learned to deal with it yet the part that I just really don't like though is the fact that he's showing his ass in public and just having these like moody swings you know for one even though he's grieving, it does not give him the right to mistreat you. And I know you said he's a good person. He buys you whatever you want. He spends time with you and your family. That's great. That's all fine and dandy. You know what I mean? That's great. But it's also respect that needs to be known too. The comparison thing. Yeah, that. I know it wouldn't sit well with me either if that were me, you know, and I was in a relationship with someone. I wouldn't want to be compared to anybody of your past, not to your ex-wife who's still alive, not to your ex-girlfriend who's still alive, not to anybody who's passed away or alive. I don't want to be compared. Don't compare me. I am who I am. There is a way to grieve without hurting anybody else's feelings. And I think that he just doesn't know how to do that. And you may be the outsource for him to talk to about his emotions and feelings. And maybe that's another reason why you guys hooked up and he's he's gotten so attached to you is because you've been there for him. You've allowed him to express himself. He said he says to turn the song off or turn the TV show off. That's him. That's his way of just blocking everything. And I've done that. And I don't, I don't do it anymore. I don't. I just, when a song comes on in my playlist that my son really likes, I just let it play. Though, you know what? To be honest, there have been a couple of times when I was, you know, driving and I was thinking of him and all of a sudden this song came on. Um, it goes, um, go on, put your record on. This is my favorite song. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't really sing too good. Um, but um, well, my son, he loved that song. Um, he loved that song. So, and there's a couple other songs on my playlist that he loved too. So, you know, um, sometimes I'll be driving and I have like a bad mood, you know, somebody to piss me off or something. And that just street, just, you know, shuffles to the song. And I just be like, all right, well, I hear you. Um, and I let it play and then there are times when I haven't been in the best of mood, you know I'm probably really thinking hard or heavy about him And a song will come on and then I'll tell Wuzzle, you know I can't hear that right now and I'll just skip it because I just know how it's gonna get to me so Sometimes we just use things to mask and like I said, I use YouTube as a mask as a as a, as a shield to keep me from thinking so hard about a lot of things that had to do with my son and um it, it worked and then it didn't work because when it didn't work was when i was breaking down and i was lashing out and i was just in a really bad mood so it doesn't always work in your favor when you try to block out and you try not to talk about it you know sometimes i just wouldn't want to talk about it i just wouldn't want to talk about it you know Regardless if you ask me or not, um, you'd ask me how my day was and I'd tell you it was good. Knowing damn well that it really wasn't, but I just didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to forget about it at times. But forgetting is not going to help you. And Daniel seems like he's like 50-50. He wants to remember her and then he wants to not remember her. But I honestly feel like he's not ready for a relationship. And it's unfortunate because you seem like you really do care for him a lot. But he has to get right with himself. I feel like for Daniel, he's been through a lot. You know, his girlfriend was murdered because she was cheating on him. The other guy killed her. 
that's got to be very hurtful, very hard to, to swallow. That's a tough, that's a big pill to swallow. It's one thing when your girlfriend gets murdered, but then she gets murdered because, you know, she was cheating on you. That's, that's a hard pill to swallow. And I don't know if he might be blaming himself and you just don't know about it. Somebody came to say hello. Yeah, you miss me? Yeah, can we kiss? Oh, I miss you too. Yeah. I went to today, but not later. Because we been at school. Oh, yeah? Did you have fun? Yeah, but it was school today. I know. You had a good time, huh? Yeah, I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to go to a swim park. Oh. I've never been there before. Uh -huh. Oh. Cool. I got fire cushions. The fire cushions. You got what, honey? The fire cushions. Oh, uh, whoopee cushion? Yeah, the fucking fart cushion. Yeah. <laughs> That's my buddy right there. So <laughs> he's so sweet. He missed me, and I missed him too. He was gone for a couple of days, um, you know, and I missed him too. And he just he came upstairs. He had this look in his eyes, like you know how he had hearts in his eyes. Okay, he had little hearts in his eyes and stuff. And just was smiling at me and stuff. I had to stop. I had to stop the camera. Y'all didn't catch that part because he was just so happy. But um, <laughs> that's my baby right there. But you know, see things like that make me happy. So that's why I feel like I don't need to be in a relationship with nobody because I. I have my family and they're my strength and I just got to get back to loving me and, and learn to just process things a lot better and a lot easier. I just think for you, Daisy, you know, he seems like he would be an okay dude, but the part that I'm not really feeling and I'm not trying to bash the dude, but the part that I'm not really feeling is the fact that, you know, he um shows his ass in public. First of all, what grown ass man is gonna show their ass in public? You know what I'm saying? Like we we're grown ups. We should not be doing that. Let's not cause a scene. Let's not cause any embarrassment to to the other person. Okay, let's not do things like that. It's not cool. However, I think like he just doesn't know how to handle things. And sometimes it seems like people want attention for all the wrong reasons. You know? And I get it. The song may be you it know like candy. oh thank you sweetheart. Thank you. I feel like some people, like you, like I was saying, they want attention for all the wrong reasons. And it seems like with Daniel, I, I just, I would really hope that he's not trying to put anyone on a guilt trip. But also, I would really hope that he realizes that, you know, he's not only hurting himself by the way he's handling things, but he's also hurting someone else. But in my personal opinion, I just feel like he's just not ready to be in a serious relationship. I feel this because he's comparing Daisy to his ex-girlfriend. He's, he's not over her and he's not going to be, but he needs to process the situation. Maybe if you would take the time to just kind of like talk to him, about the situation, how it makes you feel, you know, maybe this probably would be best over the phone versus in person. Because I say over the phone because for one, he's a man. You don't need anybody with extra strength in the same room with you. It's best to do this one over the phone. And I would say, like I say, let's go to breakfast or something. But this dude, he likes to show his ass in public. So we already know that that's one thing we cannot do. Over the phone does not mean text message because text messaging is so impersonal. What I mean is a verbal conversation over the phone. The next time maybe he compares you to her, you need to let him know how that makes you feel. But like I said, I wouldn't do this in public because he likes to show his ass, so she says. So the best place to do this would be a verbal phone conversation. If he has the audacity, unfortunately, I didn't want to say audacity, but if he does compare you to her again, I will let him know how it makes you feel, you know? You definitely have to tell him. If you plan on staying with this guy, you gotta let him know how you being compared to someone else makes you feel. Like, I, I wouldn't wanna be compared to anybody. I don't care if it was Beyonce, I don't care if it was Rihanna. I don't wanna be compared to anyone because I'm my own self. 
you know, and that takes away from me. I'm not saying I'm the best person in the world, but I just want to be known for April. Very hurtful to be con compared to the ex, regardless if she's passed away or alive. And it's probably more hurtful or hard to deal with when the person is no longer on the face of this earth. So I would definitely let him, you know, know how I feel about that, but I would do it over the phone verbally. So that way, if he gets mad, he could just hit the end button real hard, okay, and not show his ass in public like he would do. Or, you know, like you said, he has these mood swings. Now, for one, I know you like him because you said he takes, he, he'll buy you whatever you want. And he, 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 you know, he's with your family. He spends time with you and your family. Listen, Daisy, materialistic shit is not always materialistic shit. That's the cause of all evil, okay? Yeah, it's nice when people buy us gifts and we ain't got to spend our own money. But sometimes there comes a price with that as well. Like with his mood swings and acting up and, you know, saying like, hey, yeah, that's great. But listen, Respect is even better. I, I'm not with cool with anybody that has mood swings. Say this person has a mood swing and you hear the song, he hears the song playing that his girlfriend used to love and you're there. And then he has this mood swing. You have to take a lot of that into consideration. A mood swing that you just can't come back from. Maybe a little swing in of the arms. You know what I'm saying? Of the hands or the fists. That's a mood swing that nobody wants to be a part of. Okay? So... This is what I'm trying to get you to see, Daisy. I don't think that he honestly, I'm not saying run for the border, honey, but what, I'm, what I am saying is maybe you might want to uh, get your magnifying glass out and really look close up on this situation. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a couple of red flags. Me personally, I know as a person who's lost someone, I'm not ready for a relationship. Even though I didn't lose a spouse, I lost my son. You know, and I know for me, I don't want to be with anybody right now. Okay, I still use YouTube as a, as a mask or not even as a blocking mechanism. And I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but if I didn't have anything to do every day, I would sit around here and I would think about my son all day long. So it's still a blocking mechanism for me, but I take it in a more positive format and I'm able to talk about how I feel. Even if I got to get on video and tell you guys, that's what I'm going to do. But when he's having mood swings, first of all, he's a grown ass man. And if he's having mood swings in public and he's showing his ass in public, God forbid what he can do behind closed doors. Buying your own shit is always a nice thing because then you ain't got to tell nobody or you ain't got to hear nobody say, well, I got you that. Like, and I don't like to hear, well, I got you that because you can take this shit and shove it where the sun just don't want to shine. Okay. But yeah, it's nice to spend time with people's family. That's great too, because that's what you're supposed to do in a relationship. So he's not really doing anything different that anybody else has done in a relationship. These are what you do in relationships. Nothing new, nothing less. Okay. So let's not stay in this relationship because he buys you nice things and spends time with your family. Because girl, I'll send you a gift card and I'll come over to see you too, if you want to fly me out. However, I'm not going to have any mood swings on you he's hurting from his girlfriend being murdered for cheating on him so he might feel some type of guilt inside maybe I didn't do my my manly duties as a man and that's why she cheated on me and if had I been doing my manly duties as a man then maybe she wouldn't have cheated on me and she would be alive today and I'd be with her you see what I'm saying where I'm going with this this is just some of the things that could be festering inside of his head this is what I would do I I, I would I would miss a few phone calls and text messages and keep him on red and ignore okay decline let's see how his reaction gets to that because then you'll see the type of person he is maybe she cheated on him for a reason you may not know the real reason either way Daniel is going through some things that you yourself Daisy cannot fix for him this is only up to him but don't get yourself in the crossfire of his hurt and his guilt and his depression and his grieving process be a friend to him and try to be just a friend you know what I'm saying I understand you like him and if you guys really are meant to be together and he really does care for you then it'll come back around again you understand what I'm saying you guys will meet up again in life. But I just would say this, be very careful. Just be very, very careful. I know this was, this for me was like, it was a hard topic, but it was, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. And, you know, I'm sorry that I had to take those breaks. It, it was a little hard for me, you know, and I really was trying to hold myself together and be a strong person. You know what I'm saying? I really did not want to come on here crying because I just try, you know, I don't really like to talk about it a lot because I don't want to make anyone feel sad. I, I don't like to feel sad. So I try just to keep it in a lot because I don't want to make anybody else feel sad. Um, but so I don't really talk to my family about it a lot. You know, we do talk about how we miss him and things. 
But I, and I talk to my eldest son the most, you know, me and him are really close when it comes to Wuzzle. So I'm able to talk to him a lot. I try to just keep all the happy moments that I can and just throw them out there to the universe because I know that my son would never want me to be a bitter person, an angry person, or a hurt person. And, you know, I deal with a lot, a lot. Not just losing my son, but, you know, me and my daughter's relationship. It was estranged for a while. I do have, you know, my grandson. He lives here with me. I just, it's been a hard, hard grieving process for me. And... It's just something that I just process every day and I learn to live with it. And each person is different. Each person is different. And you just gotta be there for them. Regardless, it doesn't have to be in a relationship. It could be a long distance friendship, a text message, a phone call. It doesn't even have to be in person. But, it, you know, I, I just try to do a day-to-day -day thing you know, I don't really think too hard about shit. I don't allow certain things to upset me. I just don't, I don't allow things to upset me anymore. And that's why I said I don't try to be with the toxic shit. Life is short. You don't know when you're going to be here today or tomorrow. Life is short. So, you know, I love you all. Leave your comments below. And I will see you guys on the next Real Talk.